Hi party people, welcome back to my channel. So today we are playing with the We Are Memory Keepers button press and I wanted to see if there is a really like fun way I could use it in the making that I already do. So I'm a scrapbooker um, and so I wanted to see if there's a way I could use it on scrapbook pages and you know what you can make with this? You can make your own flare buttons. And I know flare like goes in and out of style but I like flare because I like the height and dimension that it adds to my pages. So I'm making a bunch of flare buttons for a project. So I'm gonna quickly walk you through how you use this and then we'll go to the voiceover and finish up the layout because I've already worked on it before I started playing with the button press. But you need to make sure that you have um, the sizes that match and they kind of just lock into the base. So there's a top and there's a base and they're clearly labeled and they lock right into the machine. So first you put in your button um, and there's a side that's like the button and then there's a side that actually has the pin back. So you want to put your button in, put your paper in and I'll show you how to die cut your papers to fit your button. I'm using the smallest size and then you want to pop your mylar in and you always want to make sure and that for the first step, your base, I'm gonna tilt this so you can see it, but there's like little um, letters on this and the top, and you wanna make sure that they're both on the A side. So then you swing it closed, give it a nice little press of the lever, and you'll feel it kind of snap into place, and now my button is gone. It's like in the top piece. You see it's not here anymore. This is where you put your back. Now I'm not making buttons, so you can quickly take the pin off. It's really easy. Just make sure you dispose of those so you don't stick yourself. And then you wanna put this into the base. Switch everything to the B side. So I don't, I'm not sure how well the camera's gonna pick up on this, but there's a B and an A on each piece. So you wanna swivel everything to the B side. Close this in again. Give it a nice press. And when you open it, there's your button and it's just kind of in there see it's a really cute little flare badge and the button press comes with three different sizes of buttons so you can make this is the small one but you can make ones I think that are up to like two inches and then it also comes with little foam pads so that's how I made my flare and I'm going to show you how you would die cut it from the beginning so these are the cutting plates so the cutting plates just kind of snap into place the top and the bottom and there is a little magnet in this, so it kind of helps everything snap into place. And then each of the button sizes come with a little die. So I have my die, I have my piece of paper, and um, I'm doing papers that don't have print, but if you do have a button that you do want to make sure has text, then just make sure you're orienting it properly in the, um, the die before you cut it. So you sw slide it in there, give it a nice good press, you'll feel the paper cut through, like you'll feel it, and then... Here is my circle that is the perfect size for my button. So now I'm just gonna go in, remove all these pieces. Everything's magnetic, so it comes out super easily. Put my pieces back in. So the top piece is a little bit hard for me to line up, but I think it's one of those things that the more you practice, the easier it gets. So let me just figure it. Sorry guys, just gonna put this back in here. Okay, there we go. So it's not hard. You see, it just took me an extra second to figure it out. You wanna make sure, again, that both your top and your bottom are on A. Put your button in, put your piece of paper. I think I'm doing this the pink side up. Pop your little bit of Mylar in. And the Mylar is just so you can have a shiny top. I made one without the Mylar and it's just a matte button, but I think if you're gonna be wearing it, the Mylar makes more sense because it's a protective layer. If you're putting it on a layout in an album, then you don't necessarily need the Mylar, but I like how shiny it is. Okay, pop your button base in here. Swivel everything back to the B side. Give it a nice good squeeze. And there is your flare button, super easy, and then it just pops right out. And if for some reason your flare button doesn't pop out, you can just pull this and push it and your button's gonna pop up. So that is how you use a button press. It is actually a pretty fun tool. There is like a 10 second learning curve. Like I watched one YouTube video and I read the instructions a few times and I made a practice button. This is a practice button I made and I was like, huh, this isn't very hard at all. All right, so we're gonna quickly switch gears to voiceover because here is what I'm working on. So I have a bunch of flowers. This is a cut file from Paige Evans, uh, three different cut files from Paige Evans. And the thought process was to make little circles, make little uh, 
centers, I guess is the best word, for my flowers. So I made little centers for my flowers using the button press. And now we're just gonna finish, I don't wanna put these two red ones next to each other. Now I gotta figure out how to fix, I'm gonna fiddle with these. But after that, we're just gonna finish this layout. So we're gonna go top down, I'll switch to voiceover and we'll finish up this page. But that is how you use the button press and how you would use it on a scrapbook layout. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this page. So off camera, I cut these flowers from Paige Evans. You can find these in her Silhouette store or on her Etsy shop. These are her layered flowers and I cut three different designs on five different kind of monochromatic schemes. And I'm using the collection Go the Scenic Route, which is her newest line with American Crafts for this particular page. So I cut my flowers and I did some hand stitching um, for some stems. And at the end of the page, you only see one of the stems that I ended up hand stitching. Um, but now I'm ready to finish my layout. So I have my flowers, I have my button circles, and I have this photo, and this photo is of uh, myself and my bridal party at our wedding. Um, and it was kind of the perfect photo for this layout because we're all wearing like floral robes, but I did choose to print it black and white because there was a lot of color in the picture and there is a lot of color on this photo. And that is one of my like tricks. If I have a picture that has a lot of color in it, I tend to just go and print my photo in black and white so then I can use a lot of color on my layout. So we are layering the way I always do this. Nothing here is different or special. So the first thing I do when I have a new ephemera pack is take everything out and put it on my desk and try all the pieces and I like the um I like the direction American Crafts has been going these last few collections because they're giving you icon ephemera as well as journaling ephemera. Um, so part of what I was struggling with with some previous collections were the pieces were just too big and there weren't any small pieces. But I really appreciate that the collections now have a pack of smaller pieces as well as a pack of larger pieces so you can mix and match. So the more icon ephemera was all flowers. And then the piece that you see I have right now with all the bigger packs and the tickets, that's the uh, journaling ephemera pack. And I loved those tickets. They had uh, two different like width tickets in a bunch of colors. And I just, I thought it was such a fun embellishment to like stick all over my page. So see, I'm just sticking things down in front of my photo, behind my photo. I loved the tickets. Um, so I used an orange one. The orange one said party pass and the pink one said memories for free and the yellow one above my photo says always a dreamer and they were just kind of perfect for this photo of my bride tribe and I. Um, there wasn't like a huge story behind this but it's one of my favorite pictures from the wedding so we pretended to take a selfie and then the cameraman took a picture of us taking a picture which is kind of meta right? It's like very like breaking the fourth wall. Um, well, it's one of my favorite pictures from us from the wedding and then I put some tags behind my photo and then I mixed in some of the smaller flowers um, again behind my photo on the left side and on the top right. Now I'm popping some stuff up on foam. I'm popping that yellow ticket up on foam because it's not me if there's not like a million pounds of dimension on a layout. So popping that yellow ticket up on foam and then I'm working on my cluster in the top left corner. So I'm still keeping the diagonal flow of the layout. I chose to treat those flowers like my background. So like if I had done any sort of mixed media or distressing, that's what those flowers are behaving as. And then I'm still keeping the diagonal flow that I have to every layout. So I started with a large journaling tag. I added a flower and then I added a blue ticket that says say yes to new things. And I'm choosing to pop the ticket up on foam just like I popped up the bottom ticket on foam. And the foam I'm using is the American Crafts um, Sticky Thumbs, Sticky Foam Dots. I have to look at the package, but it's the foam that I've always used. It's my favorite foam dots um, for working on projects like this because I think it just has the perfect amount of height. Um, all foam is not created equal, so I like these foam circles because they have the perfect amount of height. Also, they are not taller than my buttons. I wanted my buttons to be the highest point on my page, so I wanted to make sure that the foam I used wasn't any taller than my buttons, and this foam was just the perfect height for this. Now, we are doing the thing that Tashi does on every page. I feel like this, like I know everybody has like the signature things that they do on all their layouts and when you look at a layout and you're like, that's a Tashi layout. This is what I do. So I just cut out a little corner from either side of my page and then I distress it with my scissors. You could use a distressing tool which would probably be a little bit safer than what I'm doing. This is incredibly dangerous. Do not try this at home. Um, but I just like to distress the edge. Oh, also there's my like messy stitching. I just taped down my loose threads with um, some purple tape to keep them down. And then I tied off the threads at the bottom because all the threads at the bottom were down there. So I just tied them to each other. So that's what the back of my layout looks like. But no, I just distress the edges 
and then I stick down a little bit of pattern paper on either side and I like to repeat the same patterns that are already in my layout so I'm not introducing any new patterns or new color or texture um, and I like that because I think it just adds a little bit of fun I think it adds a little bit uh, it adds something to my pages especially when I'm working on a white background I totally prefer to have something like that that'll add some color and some life to the sides of my pages so now I'm going for my title and I'm using these small puffy stickers as my title element and I went back and forth about what I wanted to do with my titles and I decided to go with memories captured so I had to kidnap the D from adventure because it was the same color as the word capture so my titles memories captured and I just used my T square to make sure that those uh, puffy stickers went down straight and I used some tweezers to help me grab those alphabet stickers because they were very tiny and my fingers are sometimes like little pork chops. They're very clumsy. So I went with the tweezers to help me stick that down straight. And then that small title worked out perfectly. And then I pulled out the cardstock stickers and I grabbed that pink sticker that said just you and me. And then since I'm putting down a pink sticker, a pink, pink sticker and the memories is the blue foil. First of all, can we talk about the fact that there's navy foil in this collection? I have never seen navy foil and I'm normally not like a colored foil girl, but I'm all about the navy foil on this page. So I added that sticker that said every day. And then before I added a few butterflies and a few of these, um, the paper uh, flower stickers behind my bigger flowers just to fill up the space. And I think that completes this page. So I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you're so inclined. So let me know what you thought about this page. Let me know if you're going to be grabbing the button press and using it on your projects in the future. It is a really fun and innovative tool. And I think you can get a lot of projects done with it. It's going to be a really fun tool to see what people make in the future. So... Again, that's all I have for you. So till next time, keep it crafty and have the very best day and I will see you around. Bye friends.